Chapter 9 Now you may wonder, why? Why Cooperstown, New York? And why 1992? Warble has chosen Cooperstown because that's where he thinks people had a barrel of fun inventing baseball. But why 1992, when the Cooperstownians had, again as Warble thinks, invented the sport away back in the 1800s? Warble saw no need to go back any further than necessary, at least for this first trip. He didn't know if it would cause him to get motion sickness, so he decided to play it safe at first and see how things would go, just going back a few years in time. At any rate, Warble's convoluted reasoning can't really be logically explained, so let's just accept that he picked April 1st, 1992 as the most efficacious time of arrival at that destination. He didn't pick April 1st because of any acknowledged affinity with fools or pranks, but because that is opening day of the new baseball season and he wants to enact a new rule that will save not only baseball, but by extension the world, as Warble will explain. On arriving in the town, Warble heads for a cornfield and then presses the land button. Directly after touchdown, he climbs out of the Arodnap, walks out onto its hood or cowling, turns around and addresses his fellow travelers. Ladies and Gentile men, we are about to save our great society by means of an end around, a nipping in the butt as it were. As everybody knows, baseball is a microcosm of life, especially American life. And as America is beloved by all peoples and nations, whatever is done in America will be obsequiously imitated by all everywhere. The lesser nations and peoples of the world will trip over themselves scrambling to follow our lead. So, our model will be today baseball, tomorrow America, and the rest of the world the day after tomorrow. True, it might take a little bit longer than that for backwards third world countries who only get wind of our innovations when the llamas and water buffalo and whatnot come straggling into their remote villages bearing news of our latest innovations. The future of our culture and way of life, Orwell, I get all my culture from yogurt, Jacques objects. Is that the kind of way you're talking about? No, LaRue, I'm talking about the American way of life, our freedom, our lifestyle that everyone is jealous of, making them green with envy, and which we must maintain regardless of the cost or consequences. It is our patriotic duty to see to it that it is never altered, interrupted, or otherwise messed around with. Marianne agrees that the American way is the best and declares herself ready to fight all foes, foreign and domesticated foreigners, who try to stick a finger in her pie. Yes, American way is the best, Warble concurs, and so are American Kurds. American Kurds? Marianne asks. Sure, Warble answers. If little Miss Muffet, a pretty good friend of Jimmy Buffett, by the way, that's a subliminal advertisement in case you didn't notice, had been eating American curds in whey, which gives strength, promote courage, and taste really wonderful to boot, she wouldn't have been frightened away by a silly old spider. Even if it were a tarantula straight from the Costa Rican rainforest, W. Somerset Milkshake's epic poem about her would have been altogether different. The diminutive maiden would have fought the scary arachnid tooth and nail to keep her curds and whey. You don't say, Jacques replies. No more rhymes and I mean it, Orville says, reddening with anger. Anybody want to play a game of basketball? Jacques asks, pretending to dribble an imaginary ball in the air. Getting back to the point, Ward says, it may be that we need to do something about preserving our way of life, Warble, but how do you intend to do that and from here in 1992 of all times? This is the day the preemptive strike must be initiated, Warble answers. The timing is perfect for it. 